What's up YouTube? Welcome to PhD in Waves. In today's video, we're going to go over five things you should be doing in your wave journey to improve your wave pattern and to save time. Some of these things you may know, some of these things you may not know. So make sure to watch the whole video. And with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing you should be doing is you should be wearing a shower cap or a do-rag in the shower. This is to prevent your hair from getting wet. When your hair gets wet, your hair is going to frizz up. It's going to lift up off your scalp. And after you get out of the shower, it's going to take 30 to 45 minutes to brush your hair, get it dry, and to lay it back down. You just want to avoid wasting all that time. So you absolutely want to wear a shower cap or a do-rag before you get into the shower. Also, when you get out of the shower and your hair is wet, you're going to be lazy. You don't want to spend 30 to 45 minutes brushing your hair. That's just a waste of time. So make sure you wear a do-rag or a shower cap to avoid going through another brush session after your shower. All right, the next thing you want to do is you want to get a mirror and just observe your waves. Don't brush, don't comb, just observe your waves. Study your curls, study your pattern, look at your crown, look at every side. You really just want to study your pattern. You can watch all the wave videos in the world. You can study all the tips and tricks. But at the end of the day, you know your wave pattern better than anybody else. And you're the one brushing your hair. So you want to study the forks you have. You want to study the curl patterns. You really just want to focus on all the problems you have with your waves. That way, once you jump into a brush session, you know exactly what to target. If you just jump into a brush session and just start brushing, you're not really targeting any specific problems. You might have a weak side and you might think just brushing the weak side is going to improve it. And that might be true, but you also want to target specific problems. You want to target specific forks. You don't want to just jump into a brush session blindly and, you know, not really know what you're focusing on. I started looking at my pattern. I started really studying my pattern. I started taking pictures. I started looking at my hair in different lighting and I discovered, you know, problems in my pattern that I didn't even know about if I didn't get a mirror and look at my pattern. So you absolutely want to really study your pattern. You want to look around. You want to look at everything. You want to look at everything in detail. And that way you could just jump into a brush session and really target specific problems. All right, the third tip is while you're brushing, let's say you're brushing for an hour or two hours, you want to put on an audio book, you want to put on a podcast, or you want to put on a YouTube video. The reason I say this is because if you're brushing for one to two hours a day, that could be seven to 14 hours a week, which is basically a part-time job uh, if you think about it. And you don't want to just spend all that time just brushing your hair. Like you actually want to either learn something catch up on, you know, a YouTube video or even a phone call. Just multitask while you're brushing because if you're spending like one to two hours a day, that could add up to 14 hours a week. And I feel like that's just a waste of time. Like waves aren't that waves aren't everything and you absolutely want to focus on other things at the same time. All right, YouTube, the fourth tip that I have is to be using all the same shape brushes for your soft, medium, and hard. The reason I say that is because if you're using different shapes, each brush is brushing your hair differently and it's also conforming to your head differently. Let me show you an example. So I have a curved brush right here and look how it's shaping to my head. For the most part, it's each bristle is, is on my head, if you can see that, for the most part. Not all of it is getting my entire head, but most of it. And when you press down, you can see that it's getting my whole head. Let's say I'm brushing with this brush. And then for my soft brush, I switched to a flat brush. As you can see, only the middle section is... Only the middle section is uh, touching my head. So if you're brushing with different shaped brushes, you're essentially asking for forks because each brush is brushing your hair differently. Each brush is pulling your curls differently. Um, and that's just going to cause forks because, you know, each brush is just pulling different sections of your hair. And that's just going to cause forks. All right. The fifth and last tip that I have today is that you want to learn to brush with both hands. If you're, let's say you're a righty, you don't just want to brush each section with your right hand. I mean, it could work, but in my opinion, you should learn to brush with both hands. It's just gonna knock out your brush sessions faster, and it's also gonna balance everything out. Like, I feel like you should be brushing your left side of your head with your left hand and the right side of your head with your right hand, and that way you're not just 
you know, using your right hand for everything, right? You want to balance everything out. That way you could hit like precise angles. For me, um, I'm learning to brush more with my left hand, but I'm righty. And I used to just brush, you know, the top, the left, and I used to reach over all the way over here to brush my left side. But I feel like you should just, you know, learn to brush with both hands. That way you could hit more precise angles. For me, it feels weird to reach over all the way to my left side with my right hand. It just It's just an awkward angle. And that caused some forks. But if I just, you know, brush this side with my left hand, it's just gonna make for a more precise angle. So you absolutely wanna make sure to learn to brush with both hands. In the beginning, it's gonna be a little weird. It's gonna be a little awkward. It's gonna feel weird, but if you just brush slow, slowly over time, you'll get it in like two weeks. You'll be able to brush with both hands. All right, I have one more bonus tip for you guys, and that is to have fun with your waves. Don't take it too, too seriously. Waving should be a fun thing. Um, you should absolutely join a community, join some Facebook groups. I actually just made a Facebook group where I'm going to be giving away items to help people out with their waves. So make sure to look for that in the description. You, you just want to have fun with it, right? Go on Instagram, create a wave Instagram page where you can show your waves. That's just going to make waving so much more fun. You don't just want to be stressing over forks and connections. You actually want to have fun. You want to build a community. You want to make friends. And that's just going to make being a waver so much more fun. There's, there's tons of wave Instagram pages, there's tons of wave influencers, reach out to people, ask questions. It's just gonna make waving a lot funner. So make sure to just have fun with being a waver. All right, with that being said, let me know in the comments if you've done any of these tips or tricks. Let me know if any of these tips or tricks are new to you. Make sure to follow me on all social media platforms. Make sure to hit the like button, hit that like button right now. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.